Hey guys, it's Jager262 and welcome back to the channel. Sorry about the lighting, I don't have my lamps here yet. Uh, a lot of things got moved around, so I have a review space now, which is in this room, and then I have a studio space for painting, so this is going to be the same as the MRAP video. Same room, same studio space, but there's going to be a lot of shadows, so I apologize for the quality. But as you can see, I have a very special figure review today, and the reason I say very special is one, one of my favorite and most underrated characters in the Star Wars films, at least in my opinion, and I'm going to get a lot of hate for this one, but from what I consider to be the only good Disney Star Wars movie, that's of course director Krennic from Rogue One. And another reason why it's special is that I actually forgot about this figure. I had pre-ordered it in March, and because of COVID-19, a lot of these things are going to start shipping in July. So didn't actually expect it to get it this early. I got it about two days ago. So pretty excited we're going to get it open because there's actually a lot of cool things in this box that make it worth the price point. And why I say that is because a lot of character figures, um, not including troopers, because I know they're priced lower, will be between like $200 or so, and then it goes up to $250. He's right in the middle. Uh, for a Hot Toys figure, he costs as much as the Sideshow ones. And again, got this from Sideshow, so thanks to them for getting this to me so early. But he falls in between a normal trooper figure and a real heavy character. And the reason I think that's so great is because you actually get a lot of cool stuff in the box. So I'm going to do an overhead shot of me opening the box, show you everything that's inside, and we'll go from there. Actually, <laughs> couldn't get my tripod up high enough to look down. These are big boxes. But as you know, most Hot Toys, even Sideshow figures, they box them with these really nice lithograph art prints. We have no difference here, showing a really nice shot of the figure. Pull that away, and there's Krennic in the box. Now, I already opened this, so ignore this. It won't come like this. Nice window. He does get his soft goods cap. Well, I'm sorry, soft good cape and a raincoat in the back. We'll talk about that. But he also has a soft ca cap from the farming scene, and there's some cool stuff with both of those accessories that I'll get into in a second. So first things first, just a basic review of the figure itself, just the plastic, and then into all the accessories, for little details, stuff like that. Pop this out, put all that there. Out the figure himself, and he comes with this really cool personalized, uh, display base, a little picture of Orson there with a Death Trooper, and then this cool matte, it's also textured matte Imperial Crest. So that's fun. Also, not attached to the base, but it comes with this. I mean, you put it on your shelf, it kind of beefs it up a little bit. So, I don't know why they did that, but I like that they did that. It makes it along the lines of, say, some of the more popular heavyweight characters in Star Wars, which have really nice decorative bases but at the same time keeps it relatively cheap and easy to assemble and disassemble. But none of that's important. What is important is the figure himself. And one thing I always like to do, though I don't do it a lot with Hot Toys, is the likeness. And I could not think of a more accurate sculpt for Ben Mendelsohn or Orson Krennic. I mean, this thing is spot on. It looks exactly like him. It's a neutral expression, nothing wrong with that. There's no alternate heads or anything like there might be with, say, Han Solo, I think, had an alternate head, or Luke Skywalker. That's okay, we don't need it. His uniform, this is magnets at the top for the cape, so it does come off. Yes, he looks like without it. Just like the Hot Toys Stormtrooper, this is just a Velcro belt piece. Uh, and cloth goods there. Of course, all the clothes are cloth goods. Uh, the interesting thing to note right before I get into articulation is that this is press-on, and we'll get into a reason for that later. There are wires in the capes on the bottom, so you can pose it however you want, but it's weighted at the top with magnets, so that way it does fall around his shoulders relatively nicely. So, basic articulation, again, just like when I discovered this with my first figure, the Stormtrooper, these are not really all about articulation, they're just about likeness, but he can go arms up to 90, bring them forward, elbows go all the way up, double joint in the elbows, wrist all the way around. His legs are hindered by both the pants and the tunic, so they can only go up about that high. Double joints at the knee, he has a ball joint in the boot that I just dislocated. 
So we'll fix that. Okay. No, it's still dislocated. So yeah, he has a dumbbell joint, sorry, not a ball joint in his leg here. Now I gotta press that in. It sticks into the boot down there. There we go. Pop that back into place. All right. We'll swivel at the waist. Let's get a bit of an ab crunch. Goes back his head. Like most Hathaway figures, not a lot of articulation goes back about that far or about that far. We'll do a 360 turnaround. And the reason for that is the ball joint's way down in his chest, a very long neck, like most six scale figures. And we'll get into the reason for that in a minute. But overall, in terms of just likeness and shelf presence, this is an incredibly good figure. And I am over the moon with it. Now, the raincoat and the hat are really cool accessories. And we're going to start with those before we get to all the little ones. Because it's from the first time we actually see Krennic in Rogue One, he visits the Urso farm, and he's not yet a director. Now, the director rank in the ISB, which is that there, you might notice, is the same amount of bars that an Admiral gets. It's the same rank. When you're, I don't know if they call it a junior director, I haven't looked it up, but you go work up the stages. It's the same career path as if you were an Admiral, only you're doing it in the ISB. This is also the same rank as Wolof Tarkin was in New Hope, so just below Krennic, but it comes with the proper rank bars over the raincoat. So to apply this, I'm going to show you how to do it. First, you got to remove his cape. You take his belt off. It's easier for us because we have no accessories on it. You're going to pop this, this tag right off, and it connects to two pegs in the chest right here two pegs on the back of this and then you're gonna pop his head off and super careful with that really got to yank it there you can see how deep set that ball joint is all the way down there here's the full head then you're going to take the raincoat doesn't have any magnets or anything though that's why you kind of take the head off it is all one piece sewn together up here put his head back I can get his head back in that is so difficult, but I think it's in. All right. They call this the poncho look, by the way. Raincoat, poncho, whatever. I suppose it is more of a poncho than a raincoat. Move his arms out of the way. Attach the belt back to the waist. And it's really nice because in his tunic, they give you this cool seam. It's sewn into the figure so you can line the belt up right every time. So I can just Velcro that back and then the last part is his hair piece is actually removable so yeah, looks kind of goofy hair comes off there's a magnet on top of his head and that is because instead of making and I got it wrong earlier um, making the soft cap out of actual soft goods or rubber as some people would and it looks kind of goofy trying to get it around the hair it is actually a solid plastic piece with its own magnet right in there and it will attach to there. And that is his look from the very beginning of the movie with his lower rank. And here's where the other accessories get pretty cool because they do fit into the pockets on his shirt. These are really tiny. I'm gonna try to take them out of the package. And that's okay. So for accessories besides this, we get his DT-29 Heavy Blaster Pistol. Really cool. Unfortunately, his trigger hand can't hold this, and I'll get to that in a minute. But incredibly well detailed. You got the wood grain on the side, metallic silver all around, and they even put some translucent blue at the very end. And with the along with the pistol, you get three for his belt of the power cells. So if you remember how he uses the pistol in Rogue One, it fires, instead of just doing a controlled charge of plasma, like most blasters and Star Wars do, it fires an entire round, or an entire canister of supercharged plasma at once, which is what makes it such a powerful pistol, and he uses it like a revolver, so you always see him reloading it in the films, so you get three of those, I guess, cartridges, or shell, cells, sorry. And then, of course, you get his two 
data tubes. Now, most figures in Star Wars have these, but it's even more important for him as he is a special weapons director and the ISB, and they will slot into the pockets on his poncho and on his tunic. So those will fit in right there. The blaster pistol goes in like so. And I know in the Black Series, they usually, I did, I don't know if I did a review on him, but most of the figures have right trigger hands, but they put the blaster on the right side of the figure anyway, making it really weird to pose. They only give you the trigger hand for the left hand. Ben Middleston is left-handed, so Orson Krennic in the movie was also left-handed. He was a left-handed shooter, and that's why his pistol's like this. So, nice touch props to Hot Toys for that. I mean, uh, with all the attention to detail that they already have on this figure, that's not really something they would mess up, but still. Give them credit where credit is due. Yeah, the only finicky part about this, the accessories, is getting the power cells to go into their spots on the belt. And those are these three slots here. You kind of got to open them up a little bit. They're actually wires attached to the leather. And the reason for that is that you don't want to lose these pieces once you get them in. So try not to break it out. There's two, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two layers. One is for the actual cylinder and one is for the cell piece, this part here trying to get it into both which is proving harder than i thought but for now whatever i'll fix it later just so that way you guys can see the figure with the whole belt and all of its accessories pop it in pop it in So yeah, they look kind of wonky because that part's pushing them back out. This part. But yeah, so when you put the belt on, that's what it'll look like. But I'm going to take it off, show you some of the hands and final thoughts. So, remove the poncho, same thing, hat comes off. Ooh, head comes off, poncho. Data tubes come out. They will slide into here. There's only room for one on either side, just like the actual costume in the film. So one will go there, one will go here. And for some reason, this one will go slanted like it's supposed to. This one kind of just sits straight up. This pocket's way wider. Don't know why that is, but it is. Also, don't forget red on top. And there you go. Oh, and his head, right. <laughs> the more important part of that. The only thing I don't like about this whole process is trying to push him in around those joints. His head will get caught up on his shirt and it's kind of hard to pull that back up like this. See how it's all messed up now? Yeah, I'm just gonna pull the head back out, get the shirt out of the way, try again, all right. There you go. There, back on, and he's ready to go. Minus the belt. So he comes with a total of two, four, six, eight hands. Yeah, there's an, I mean, seven hands. There's an odd one out. He comes with these two hands here to do just the neutral pose of him folding his arms in front of him. He comes with this hand, which is his gloved hand just on. And then, or it's uh, not this one, it's this one, the slightly opened hand that doesn't hold anything. You can see that it's to keep it up here. And then he has this closed fist like this, which is him, or this hand here, pulling the glove on to do a certain pose. He has his trigger finger here, and then he has just a generic fist and then a slightly relaxed fist. And to round this out, how to put the blaster into this trigger hand, the reason it doesn't work is that his finger actually doesn't fit into the trigger guard there at all. It's too big, too wonky, and you really gotta force it to make it work. And uh, I don't want to, because I don't want to snap the guard. And so he kind of just holds it like that, like way crooked. 
and it will fall out a lot. So probably not a hand I'm ever going to use, but he does come with it. And if you want to make it work, you can. And um, just forgot to mention on the cap, really nicely detailed Imperial crest there. Uh, it's Hot Toys, so just a highly detailed figure. Really impressed with its sculpt, the look, the screen accuracy. It's just really, really cool. Let's get him all buttoned up again. Put that cape back on. I will say after a few times of messing with the hair, it does get a little bit looser. It's not really what you want. So yeah, to do the pose with his hands in front, it's kind of hard to make it look natural, but you can pull it off. It's just him standing. It's the pose from the lithograph art on the box. He just kind of stands there like this. Then you can move the cape or adjust the cape however you want. So yeah, there he is. There is Director Krennic. And just for a size comparison really quick, here he is next to my Hot Toys on six scale Stormtrooper. So about the same height as the Stormtrooper. Um, that seems accurate, Ben Middleton's actually pretty tall, so Krennic should have been a little bit taller than the Stormtrooper, but as far as screen accuracy goes and everything else, it's really a small grip that I'm not worried about. Absolutely an amazing figure, and it's going to look really cool on the shelf. If you guys didn't get a chance, hopefully the pre-orders are still open, but I, well, they're not. I got mine. Hopefully they'll re-release it, or you'll be able to find it on a secondary market at some point, but this is a really great figure for any fans of Rogue One. I know they did Jin Erso, they did the Death Trooper, I think they did a Scarif Trooper as well, but as far as I know, this is the first time that Hot Toys has done an Orson Krennic figure, and it's the first Orson Krennic, or Director Krennic, I keep calling him by his full name, but the first Director Krennic figure in six scale, so absolutely incredible figure, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, or subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, as always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.